Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host Stan Rutan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And as promised, we're kind of kind of stick to the uh, bigger reds for the next uh, few episodes because you know that's what people will be looking for during Christmas time. Perhaps you're having prime rib, you're looking for something to match up with that. And also, I think uh, one of the main gifts that people like to give during the holidays are maybe bigger style reds, more structured reds. Maybe you're going to spend a little bit more money because this is a friend of yours. Maybe you don't have to spend a lot of money. Maybe we can find a really good wine for you that you don't have to blow a ton of bucks on to impress your friends. And those are always the wines that we are looking for, especially me. I'm, I love to find great values. So we're going to kick it right off. I'm kind of excited tomorrow. I'm having David O'Reilly out for one of my wine tasting events, one of my personal favorite Washington winemakers. Owen Rowe, Corviday, Sharecroppers. Well, Sharecroppers, we'll leave that one out. Uh, mostly over Corviday and Owen Rowe. Sharecroppers is more of a uh, He buys juice from other wineries, and that's okay, too. He definitely has a blending. I forgot to put a little Santa Man up there. Hold on. I'll be right back. There we go. Kind of keep with the spirit. Got my little Santa guy here. Better put it back. I think I... Did I put it back last time? Looks like my wife might have caught me using Santa for my stage. So we're starting with this... Uh, Abhazmento um, Edizion Oro from Ven Veneto. It's a Rosso, and guess what? They don't tell you what grape they use in it, but just based on past experience with this wine, I'm thinking it is at least a lot of Corvina, which they use in Amarone. What I love about this wine, I've had it in the past, is it is only $12. Great bottle. Uh, let me do another quick close-up. I just showed you the label, but it has this nice little etching on the neck. I don't know if you can see that. Just a classic bottle. Um, and uh, I think, you know, oops. It's just a real classy bottle, and it's only 12 bucks. Let's see what we get on the nose. You know, uh, Amarones go for, you know, anywhere from, oh, they can go up to well over $100, but usually, you know, around $70, $50 to $70, you can get pretty good Amarone. And uh, if you haven't had an Amarone yet, you might want to go out and try one. They're excellent. I did an Amarone episode, like, way, way, way back, uh, a long time ago. I think I made a link on it uh, recently. I'm trying to remember if I uh, actually did this wine, reviewed this wine. I'm going to review it again, nonetheless. Let's see what we get on the nose. Classic dark currants and bark. A little dusty element comes through on the nose. A little bit of forest floor. Now that's a different, a little bit different dirt. You know, forest floor has all those pine needles and fir needles, and they get all kind of rotten. And you know, you've walked in the forest. You know what I'm talking about. It has that kind of smell to it on the nose, but but it's dominated mostly by black currants. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very nice. Very almost on a rich level. Very smooth tannins. A lot of um, black currants come through with a little edge of boysen or blackberry on the back end. It has good acidity. It's not, I wouldn't call it bright. The acid just kind of is there. You can sense it. The forest floor notes come through barely, just barely. Don't be afraid. And a little bit of minerality, which I like. You know, this wine never lets me down. It's non-vintage. So, you know, obviously they're blending different vintages to make this wine. And I even looked on the website, couldn't find it. I looked at the distributor website, could not find out what was in it. But based on the flavor profile, I definitely believe there's Corvina in this wine. 
it, it reminds me a lot of a, an Amarone without that dried currant sort of raisiny characteristic. I'm even getting a little bit of red cherry on the back end, red and black cherries. There's definitely mineral driven on the finish. This would be a great wine with prime rib. A great, great gift wine if you're giving out gifts to friends and you know you don't know what they like. Almost everybody I ever recommend this wine to, you know, they, they, they all like it. They come back for more. My son's been trying to expand his palate. He comes down to the store. I recommend this wine. He's been back for it two or three times. You know, so it has that mass appeal at the same time. It has kind of an old school feel on the palate. You know, good smooth, but little minerality, a little bit of bark, a little bit of forest floor coming through with a lot of currants and cherries and boysenberry. Love that wine. And like I said, there's enough acid to make it match up with food. This would be great with prime rib, great gift wine. I have to go. I have to go A minus on that wine just because of the quality that you're getting. The quality to price ratio is tremendous. Tremendous. A minus. And in, in the Northwest, it's just, in up in Seattle area, up around the Pacific Northwest, it's distributed by American Northwest distributors. They're direct importers of this wine. So if you live out in the Pacific Northwest, you have an opportunity to get your hands on some of this as Pazmento. As, as, as Rosso. Go to your wine store, make them do some work. American Northwest Distributors, it's well worth the price. 12 bucks, great Christmas wine. I got it stacked at the store. You know, amazing wine. Let's move on to the next one. We're going into the uh, Argentina now, a classic from Argentina. And this one is the 2000 and Find it. I was looking for the vintage on this. It drives me nuts when you can't find it. I know it's on here somewhere. <sighs> oh, I hate that, and I know it's right in front of me. This is 2012 to call Patriota. 60% uh, Malbec, 60 or 40% Bonarda. Mendoza, Argentina. And this, my friends, was number 45 in the Wine Spectator's Top 100 Wines for, there we go, for 2014. And I just want to ask these guys, why do you make it so difficult to find the vintage on this wine? I have no idea. It should be right in front of me. And I know it's 2012 because I grabbed it and I had, did I did find it. That does not make for good showmanship right there. It irritates me. I know it's 2012. It is 2012. Number 45 on the Wine Spectator's Top 100 Wines. I'm working on my uh, top 40 wines under 20 bucks. I almost got the list complete. Now I just got to... Uh, get it up on my blog. I will be doing that not this coming Saturday, but following Saturday. By the way, this Saturday on the Blue Collar Wine Guy, Seattle PI, if you get a chance, I am uh, presenting my winery of the year for 2014. I'm very excited about this winery, and uh, I know uh, when you read the article, you will understand why. Let's see what we get on the nose. A lot of coffee bean. A lot of coffee bean. That's the first thing. Coffee bean and currants. I get a little bit of smoke, which is typical of Bonarda. Bonarda, which is the, a grape, is um, reminds me a lot of a Syrah without the bacon fat, more the smoky edge of a Syrah. Getting a little bit of petrol, a little bit of rubber boot action on this wine, which is interesting. And almost like a perfumed uh, violet. Maybe just a hint of vanilla and chocolate coming through. 
I'm excited about this nose on this wine. You know, this is a, I've had this wine many on many occasions, different vintages. Haven't always been super impressed. Now I'm excited to try this. Let's see what we get in the mouth. Little blueberry currants, blueberry right on the back side. It's it's it it seems like it's gonna go fruit bomb on you, but it doesn't go there. I think I got some wine on my glasses. Okay, doesn't go fruit bomb on you. It seems like it's gonna go in there. In fact, it doesn't go quite enough for me. It's like it's kind of you know holding back a little too much. Coffee bean notes come through. I get some minerality. The currants are there. I get um, a little bit of uh, tobacco coming through. Kind of a almost like a toasty barkish thing coming through on the finish, which is interesting. You know, to be quite honest with you, it doesn't open up quite enough. It might need some more time. I have it. I've had it open for actually a long time. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take exception with this one as far as being in the top 100 wines. I don't quite understand it. I mean, this is one of the better, better, better. This is one of the better. No, this is one of the better vintages I've tasted of this wine. And uh, you know, I'm just curious though as to why they would choose this as their top number 45. I, I tasted a lot of wines that are a lot better than this. Good structure. I love that kind of barkish, tarish thing that comes with the currants on the backside. It's a good wine. It is a good wine. I will give it that. Very well built. It's $19. Hard to taste it on the back end of a $12 wine that's just stellar. Um, this one will age. I'll tell you that right now. This one will age, probably improve over the next five to eight years easily. So you might want to be patient with this right now. I think it's a B, B plus wine. B, B plus, not solid B plus. B, B plus for the money. Um, this would be a good with primer. Uh, it just doesn't open up enough. It's almost like it teases you. It's like saying, okay, I'm going to be big. And then it doesn't get big. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't do a lot of things in the mid palette, which I kind of expect for $20. I expect that for $20. So B, B minus, B, B plus. Might go into the A category in five to eight years. I'll give it that. Well, there you go. A couple of wines that you might decide to... Good luck trying to get the call, by the way. I hate to say that, but I, I just talked to the uh, sales rep this morning, and Young's Market is out of the call, probably because Total Wine or Bevmo or one of those huge animals bought it up just because the spectator put it as number 45. But I'm glad I tasted it. I wouldn't have bought anything anyway. I would not um, have had people blow 20 bucks on this bottle of wine when they, I can find better ones for less. I worked on a new ending to this program. I'm going to try this. If you want to make a comment below, please do. Please make a comment. Tell me what you think. I've been working on trying to think of the ending. So, thanks for watching. And remember, there's nothing mysterious about wine. It is just fermented grape juice. So drink it. Enjoy it. Know what you like. Be true to your palate. And together we can keep the snob out of wine.